is um, the first of two videos on forces. And this first video describes forces, um, how they're added together and so on, and the next one deals with Hooke's Law. So let's really start with the most obvious force we have um, and talk about weight. Now it's often uh, misconstrued by people, who, um, by um, doctors and so on, or when you're weighing yourself. Because often they say, your weight is such and such in kilograms. However, that, this is not the case. Strictly speaking, scientifically, your mass, which describes how much there is, of something, is measured in kilograms, not your weight. So, for instance, if we would have um, a block of something of 50 kilograms, then that same block would still have 50 kilograms, whether it wasn't on Earth, or whether it was on the Moon, or indeed whether it was on something massive like Jupiter. We'd still have 50 kilograms of the something. However, weight is the force with which a mass is attracted to a planet. Now, if it's a force, so weight is a force, it must be measured in newtons. So forces are always measured in newtons. After the famous man himself. So weight is a force, therefore it's measured in newtons. So somebody should be saying, you weigh so many newtons as opposed to you may weigh so many kilograms. Now let's just look at how that force varies with the different planets. Let's say the moon. Jupiter. We know Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. And of course, here is Earth. Okay, now, I think you probably have a reasonably good guess that the weight on the Moon is the least. Because Jupiter is the biggest planet, the weight on Jupiter is the greatest. And the weight on Earth is somewhere in between. Of course, we've said here that it's to do with the mass, it's to do with how much you have, but it's also to do with how strongly you're being pulled down by the planet. And we call how strongly you're being pulled down the gravitational field strength, or G. Gravitational field strength is called G. And it gives a representation of how many newtons does each kilogram weigh. So it's measured in newtons per kilogram. On Jupiter, we're running 24 newtons per kilogram. It's quite strong. On the Moon, it's only 1.2 newtons per kilogram. Whereas on Earth, it's approximately as good as 10 newtons per kilogram. Now, with um, 50 kilograms running it on Earth, saying that every kilogram must experience 10 newtons, our weight on Earth must be a multiple of the two. 50 times 10 gives 500 newtons. Still the same mass of 50 kilograms, but 500 newtons is the force we experience, or the weight. Now, on the Moon, we only have 1.2 newtons per kilogram. However, we still have the 50 kilograms, and that gives us a force of 60 newtons. Whereas on Jupiter, of course, we have a force of 24 newtons per kilogram, 
and that gives us a force or a weight of 1,200 newtons. So you can see here, look, 50 kilograms, the mass remains the same on each planet, but the force or its weight is different depending on the size of the planet. In other words, we need to use the equation weight equals mass times gravitational field strength. Well, weight is measured in newtons, mass is measured in kilograms, and g is measured in newtons per kilogram. Or indeed, if you prefer, that is the triangle that you can use in this instance. Fantastic. So let me give you a problem then, if you worked all that happily through. This time it required rearrangement of the equation. Let's say on a planet on Mars, let's say the Mars rover arrives, which is about 50 kilograms again. But this time it's experiencing a weight of 2,400 newtons. What is G on Mars? If you think you know hit balls, otherwise here comes the answer. Okay then, so what do we have? <coughs> okay, if you had followed this through accurately, you would cover up G and that leaves us with weight divided by mass. Which gives us 2,400 newtons divided by 50 kilograms, which gives us 48 newtons per kilogram. Actually, that's exceptionally large. It's larger than Jupiter. We know Mars isn't large enough. The problem was I accidentally should have written that as 500 kilograms. The Mars rover was huge. It was nearly a ton in weight. So actually, that's half of what it was. That was there. This would be 4.8 newtons per kilogram, which is about right. It's half the strength of Earth's gravity. Okay, so that's how we work out weight. That's the first important point. The second important point is how do we work, how do we draw what's called a free body diagram? How do we draw these forces? Because it's rare to have a system where there's just one force acting. I mean, we probably want to talk about that more and more in physics. One force acts makes problems clean and solvable. However, that's not the case. In physics, you often have lots of forces acting on a body. And here is one of them, nice and simple. Here is a weight, a mass on Earth. There are three simple laws, four, sorry, simple laws on how to draw a free body diagram. One is you require an arrow pointing in the direction of the force. And before I draw it, I'll just say, I'll give you the other two rules. The second one, it must or originate from the source of the force. Three, the length represents the size of the force. And then four, just to make it nice and clean, it should be labelled. Okay, so let's draw this, a block resting on the surface of Earth. Okay, what forces are present? Well, I know about weight, and weight always acts from the center of mass of an object, from the center of the object. Okay, now the floor itself also exerts a force upward on the block. And where does it originate from? Well, it originates from where those two come in contact. We call that reaction. The size was important here. Length represents the size of force. So here, whatever the weight is, is equal to the reaction force. So you must draw these um, the same size. 
And finally, we've labeled them weight and reaction. Super. Okay, let's try another example of a car, a badly drawn car. on Earth this time, on a surface, on a road. Okay. Right, two examples. First one, that it's stationary. And the second instance, with it moving. Okay, if you think you can draw the arrows on this, go for it. Hit pause, otherwise here comes the solutions. First of all, here is the weight acting on it. It's from the center of mass, center of the object. And there is a reaction again taking place off the floor. However, this time, because I have two of them, we need to make sure that they're both half the length of the other one. So if they were at to add up, they'd equal the length of that arrow, because it's equal, this object is stationary. OK, what would happen if it would be moving? If it would be moving, there would be this thrust. Let's imagine it's going that way. And with all of these cars, there is also going to be a drag force acting on it. Good. So looking good to start with. Okay, two more examples. What about an object hanging two bits of string it obviously has weight, this object does. So can we draw the free body diagram for this? If you think you can, hit pause, otherwise here comes the answer. Right, okay, let's try it then. So the weight of the object is acting down. And this time, there is tension in the string. You've got to draw this quite carefully this time because how much tension are we talking about? Well, there's one on each side, so each has a contribution towards the weight. So half of this arrow comes from one of them, and the other half comes the other one. But it comes from this projection here. So if I'm looking for the right length, I probably need a little bit longer. So I ought to really have my arrow that large. It's even that much, because this little projection, that arrow, is the bit that counteracts the weight. And I get the same effect from here, so I get these two projections adding together to equal the weight. So that is an object hanging from two strings. With strings, you used tensions. Okay, and finally, what about the moon? And what about the Earth? Where are the forces there, and how do they act? Think you know, hit pause, otherwise here comes the answer. Right, now this force, interestingly, is a force of gravity. And gravity acts between two objects, the two objects by the same value. So there is our force acting, it's very simple in actual fact. Good, right. Now, Let's talk about how these forces add together. I think this is fairly intuitive, and actually lots of it we pretty much picked up on the previous bit anyway. However, we need to um, talk about it nonetheless. So there's two things to bear in mind. First thing, forces are balanced. both vertically and horizontally. If objects are stationary, 
Okay. We've seen this example all the way before, whether it was the car resting on the road, we had equal reaction forces to the weight, or if we um if we or you could be given some problems in which they ask you these stationary objects. Say we had five kilonewtons, five kilonewtons, ten newtons, five newtons, and fifteen newtons. This would be stationary because not only the force acting up and the force acting down result in zero vertically, but also the force acting behind, add these two together, which gives a total of 15 newtons. It's the same as the force acting in that way. So it's balanced forces. The forces are balanced. In other words, the resultant force are zero. So balanced force equals the resultant force, which equals zero. Something to burn into your brains. So if you were given a problem, such as this, where you had four newtons, three newtons, you knew this was stationary. What are these two forces present? I hope you would answer 3 newtons and 4 newtons. Good, okay then. Now, but, and this is the important bit, let's imagine we take an aeroplane. Not my best aeroplane. It's getting worse. However, we know it has a certain weight associated to it, we know that each of the wings is providing a certain lift, and they must be equal, so it's not going up or down. We know that the wings and the engines are providing a certain thrust, and we know that the drag is acting behind. In actual fact, the lift gives the same as the weight, vertically. And horizontally, we know that the thrust and the thrust from the two engines is equal to the drag. So intuitively, we would say to ourselves, well, hold on, the resultant is zero. So doesn't that suggest that when the forces are balanced, and balance meaning a zero resultant force, the object is stationary? Well, aeroplanes don't just drop out of the sky. In actual fact, this continues to move. However, balanced forces also mean constant speeds. Please learn that. Balanced forces also mean constant speeds. In actual fact, what we've described is Newton's first law. Newton's first law is a combination of this and a combination of this. I suppose that now begs the question, what happens when the forces are unbalanced? And that's what we'll talk about now. Okay, then. so what happens when forces are unbalanced? Let's imagine our car. The car's nice and easy, we can picture what on earth's going on here. It's stationary. We have a nice, I say stationary, 
it's just a stationary. Have nice weight and two reaction forces. And then, so these two add up. So therefore they're balanced. Now let's say we put a foot on the accelerator, or one does, you can't drive at the moment, so, and you suddenly give it some thrust. Now there is an unbalanced force here. In actual fact, if I should do this as a blob, the car, this is what we have as our unbalanced force, because the other two up and down cancel each other out. So what happens? Unbalanced forces cause objects to speed up. Another word for that is accelerate. Unbalanced forces cause objects to speed up or to accelerate. Or should I say, to be more precise, change speed, which is the same as accelerate. For instance, let me take the next example. Here's the dodgy car. On the road, we have the same reaction forces going on, and the same weight. We have our thrust, and now the car is experiencing some drag force from the air and a bit of drag force from the road. These two add up to be there. Equals T air plus T road. And obviously the reaction plus the reaction equals the weight. So suddenly we have balanced forces. But what does that mean in this example? Does it mean suddenly the car has gone from accelerating to stopped? No. It means it's going at a constant speed. OK, let's go a little while longer. It sees suddenly traffic lights that are red. What happens here? Well, suddenly, foot off the accelerator the thrust diminishes considerably. Still got the reaction force, still got the weight, and at that speed, when it takes its foot off the accelerator, you've still got the drag from the road, and you've still got the drag from the air. So suddenly, if I were to look at this, T is much less than drag of the road plus drag of the air. However, the weight does equal the reaction plus the reaction. So there's nothing horizontally going on, but suddenly you have, if I was to draw this as a little ball, though it is going in this direction, it has a big resultant force in that direction. So what happens here? Does it suddenly bounce backward and start going backward? No. Unbalanced forces cause objects to speed up or accelerate or in turn, if it's backwards, slow down, deaccelerate. So here we have an unbalanced force which deaccelerates or indeed slows down. Okay. I mean, maybe you might want to consider what happens to an aeroplane on the runway. What's happening to the lift force here compared to the weight, the thrust, and the drag? Because if I was to do it as a little dot, we'd probably have a resultant force of lift and thrust. Thrust would be larger than the drag by this much, and the lift would be greater than the weight by that much. Whereas when we're in mid-flight, flying at a nice steady speed, 
drag, thrust, lift, weight, it's all balanced. And when it's coming down, the weight will be bigger than the thrust, uh, than the lift, etc., etc. Okay, so just make sure we are happy with the concept of weight, number one. How you might draw a free body diagram and the rules. Forcing, forces added together in straight lines. And what happens when you have balanced forces and unbalanced forces. Good, hope that makes sense.